hi, I'm Ling. So just to explain a little bit on my background. So I'm actually originally trained as an architect, but I went on to do design, making, and coding on an everyday basis nowadays. Um, I specialize in wearable technology, but just because I've always been interested in using technology to understand how people interact with the built environment. I'm from Umbrellium, so I think some of you might have known some of us from the office, like Usman, who founded Umbrellium, and also Andrew is sitting over there. Um, and our office is pretty close by, it's five minutes away at Scratton Street, so if you are interested, you can pop by to say hi whenever you want to. Um, so most of the designers from the office comes from an architectural background, and the works we do span a very broad spectrum from the hardcore infrastructural projects, whereby we work with cities to develop uh, urban operating systems, to working within the Internet of Things genre, whereby we create search engine to index the Internet of Things devices globally. And also, we also do a lot of large-scale spectacular events whereby we work with members of the public uh, to create a performance and to do a work together. So what it means is that we work with cities a lot and the common theme that spans across all the projects that we do is involving ways of structuring participation. And as mainly architectural designers in the office, we are not really interested in building physical fabrics, but we are more interested in um, structuring ways in which people, citizens, can collectively come together to use technology to make sense of uh, making decisions for the cities, how they want it to be, instead of letting technology dictate what um, the city should be. So I'm here to talk about our latest project, Cinder. Before I go deep into it, it's actually a very fresh project. It actually went live two weeks ago. So everything is very fresh in my head. And I just wanted, wanted to talk to you about our initial interest with this project. Before we got the project, we have always been very interested in augmented reality. And we are very, very much interested in the overlapping of physical and digital space. So we always wanted to explore this in future projects. So we were actually commissioned by the City of Cambridge Education Foundation to work with this new school called Trumpington Community College uh, in Cambridge to produce a work that is going to stay with the school for a period of 30 years. And the school is built as part of this new master planning development in Cambridge where there's new residential and offices. And this school is very much focused on science and technology and there's a lot of high-tech sensors within, built into the uh, building fabric. For example, there's carbon dioxide sensors, humidity sensors, solar panel, motion sensors and all these things. So it's pretty high-tech for a school that is teaching 12 to 18 years old students. And also, all the students are equipped with a Chromebook. I'm not sure whether they pay for it, but I think it's actually one of the new moves by the government to try to bring in technology as a new way of educating for the students. So the project was commissioned to us two years ago and we knew immediately that we wanted to do something that would actually educate the students and let them learn new things over time and also playing with AR uh, stuff that we've always been interested in. And the brief we gave to ourselves was how do we get students to make sense of the changing environment around them through this work. So before I go into the video, I'm going to tell you a brief explanation of the project. So through a series of workshops and uh, with students and teachers, and also through many, many iteration and prototyping, we created Cinder, this virtual cat that roams around the school uh, through the invisible network. So it is a manifestation of the building. She changes shape and color based on the changes in the building environment. She roams around the network space from spaces to spaces, popping up to us for food and popping up to us for playing with students. And she's a part interactive mascot and also part avatar for the building. Uh, she responds in real time to the state of the building and to the occupants. So I'm going to show you a video of what's going on, but maybe I'll show you the... It loves to 
fly in the sun when it is, when it is happy. Sometimes it flies into a tree. It is that happy. It is less <coughs> concentrated. As you can see, our high-tech group of workers have been very well, working very hard. After thousands and thousands of prototypes, they have come up with this one design. Neto, a brand new breakthrough in the cat digital system. Ready, tell us Um, here I'm starting to animate some kind of an idea of a cat. It's a very basic cat, uh, but again, it gets occluded by physical objects. It disappears into the space and reappears. Actually, to get 25 kilowatt hours of energy from those solar panels and that and those values will be taught to you in class how that works so you'll see now you have two panels solid and one panel flashing which means you've got 50 kilowatt hours has been done today and you're on your way to your 75th <laughs> I'm going to talk a bit more about the process that goes into making uh, Cinder. So as you can see from the video, um, essentially what the components are made up of is um, a back-end central server that is connected to an open framework app that controls the Kinect. And there's a two-meter screen at the main hall of the school. Whereby the, so it's basically showing what the Kinect is uh, seeing. And also, the central server has the capacity to connect up to 750 Chrome apps per time. So there were many, many challenges that uh, goes into this project, mainly because although it was commissioned to us two years ago, but we only got into doing this project four months before it goes live. So it's a very tight schedule of time. And we wanted to make sure that everything is done up to a certain level. And one, one of the first challenges that we have is uh, crafting this experience, because given that it's going to be for 30 years, this cat has kind of has to be a bit time, more timeless. So what we want is actually in, what we want in it is the poeticness, uh, the poetic of the project. How do you convey this creature in the network? Uh, what does it mean for the cat to roam in the network space? And how is the cat going to be represented in a 3D environment like the main hall versus a 2D environment like the Chrome app? And so there were actually a lot of iteration on this representation of a cat. How do we deal with it? We were actually also very lucky to have met, uh, to have found this animator online on YouTube video. So this guy, Rob Hammonds, he actually worked uh, with um, movies like Harry Potter and Iron Man. And, but somehow he has this obsession with animating cat. So when we approached him, 
he was actually very enthusiastic to work with us on this project. So he was involved in the crafting of the cat movements. So we gave him basically for um, close to 60 sets of movements for him to animate. So we have specific things like we want the cat to eat this way, we want the cat to walk around in how many degree and which camera angle. So we gave all the instructions to him and he animated the movements for us. And also partly the reason why we chose a cat uh, at the very beginning was we, the cat has always had this mysterious quality to it and also it has a lot of historical connotation like uh, in the Egyptian and Japanese culture. And also, one of the things that's, that we always joke about when we're working on it is that sometimes if the cat doesn't appear in the system, it's actually a feature, not a bug. So it's kind of play up to our advantage when something happened. So, um, so that's that. And once we get through the concept stage, one of the big challenge that we have is also making sense of all the complexity for this project. Because we have to deal with a lot of things. We have to deal with the sensor data from the building management system. We have to somehow think about how do we uh, get students to be involved in the decision making for this project. And also we want to also take time to experiment with all sorts of technology that, uh, for the AR and also for the Chrome app. And last thing is the most important thing which is to keep it simple because it's a project for students of 12 to 18 years old and we kind of want to get them to understand this so that they can play with it for a long time. So when it comes to the BMS system, there's hundreds and hundreds of uh, data, sense, uh, data that we can get from them. And the BMS is actually provided by Siemens. So there's actually a lot of um, difficulty with this. We actually got it working right up to, I think, one week before it goes live. Just because, first of all, there's a lot of bureaucratic stuff because you have to work with corporate companies and sometimes they might not have the time to uh, come and work with us on how do we connect the data to our central server. And also second of all is um, there's hundreds of sensors, so we have to make the decision on what is needed, what should the student learn from. And the decision actually got down to the students through the workshop where we start to understand what level of stuff that they can understand, what kind of environmental factors do they understand the best. So in the end we decided that this project is all about um, electricity and solar energy. So the cat food is actually generated from the amount of solar energy uh, generated by the solar panel on the roof. So the more solar energy there are today, the more solar cat food there are for the cat to eat today. And also when the cat is sleeping, the cat dreams of all the data from the BMS as well, like whether the building is doing well or it's not performing well. So the students have get a better idea of how they could impact by saving water or they could impact by uh, using less electricity, closing the lights when the class is over. The second thing is um, working with young kids. I think some of you might have kids and you know that kids have very short attention span. So this was quite interesting because this was written by the students at the end of the project. We got them to come up with the description for Cinder. So I think they were very much um, enticed by Google maybe, to, it seems like a good advertisement for Chromebook. Um, so that part is very hard because we were trying to figure out ways to structure this involvement with the, in the workshop and we actually got down to creating worksheet for them. So we actually have a certain set of rules whereby then the students will decide how is the building and the cat related and what kind of things that, they, that will interest them when the cat does something. And also, they were also involved in the crafting and designing of the cat because we want it to be timeless, so we decided that it's going to be a tabby cat just to keep it as close to a real cat as possible. But they, will, they design all the accessories for the cat. So for example, this sombrero hat, the student decided that they're gonna, the cat is going to wear it only on a Friday when the weather is good, when the weather is sunny, and when there's a lot of solar food available in the storage. The last thing that I want to talk about is the, the, the effort that goes into uh, experimenting with all the available technology. So we actually play around with many different, I mean the two versions of Kinect, trying to figure out which one works the best. And then we also experiment with the programs to control it. So we were actually playing with Unity at the very beginning because to think of the animating, uh, animating the cat and all these things. But in the end we uh, decided on open framework and I think some of you who have worked on Kinect who have known that the thing about uh, working with 3D objects through it is the issue of occlusion. How do you make sure that this 3D object is represented in space properly and that it looks like it's actually part of 
the, uh, the physical fabric. And also as we, as we were experimenting, uh, experimenting along the way, we also realized that there's also issue with the clothes that people wear. For example, if you see here, she is wearing something very reflective. So her body is kind of, because uh, the reflective surface actually reflects, bounce off the light from the kinect. So the kinect couldn't see that it's actually a mess there. So one of the challenges is also, how do we get the kinect to understand that this is actually a body, a mess, that the cat has to go around and not go through it. So that's also some of the challenge. And another thing is also, how do, how do you understand crowded space when it's filled with people versus when it's filled with mess? So all these kind of things goes into this four months of production. Um, lastly, with the Chromebook, um, as much as the, I mean, the language is pretty simple to write, but the thing, the challenge of Chromebook is how do we make sure that the Chrome app is lightweight enough so that it can be installed in the student's Chromebook and that it actually fetch the animation of, of the cat in high resolution and has the proper frame per second. So that's also some of the challenge that we have with Chrome app. And the key thing is also, how do we convey this sustainability issue to the students? Because students will be looking through the Chrome app for more information on this cat. So we had a lot of iteration on the design, the graphic design as well. How do you make sure that the students can understand that the, the current weather is this, this is the amount of food, and who has already fed the cat beforehand? And trying to convey all the information in a very simple form for students to understand. So um, I'd like to end off with uh, this cat, which is my cat. And I actually got this cat two months in the production because I kind of got fall in love with cat. And um, I'll just end off the, my talk with that. Thank you. <laughs>